Glenn Costa here with the Pilot Report, and today I'm out at the Frederick, uh, Maryland Airport, and we're going to be taking a demo ride in Bob Zyko's Glass Air 1 right here behind me, Slick. So uh, Bob's going to tell us a little bit about the airplane, and then we're going to hop in and go for a ride. This is a Glass Air 1RG. It's a 1985 model. Uh, this particular kit is no longer produced. Now they have the Glass Air 2s and 3s. The main difference being the engine horsepower. A Glass Air 2 is usually in a 200 horsepower engine, and a Glass Air 3 is 300 or more. There's even some with turbine engines in them. Uh, this one will do about 170 knots, plus 6, minus 4 Gs, and it has the standard or shorter wing. It gives it about a 140 degree a second roll rate. Airplane is also available with a about two and a half foot longer wingtip and that gives you better high performance or high altitude flight and better uh, takeoff and lower stall speed. This one has an IO320, it's a 160 horsepower fuel injected four cylinder engine. Um, so it has a standard engine in the Glass Air 1s. Uh, the 2s are usually IO360s and the 3s are IO540s or 550s. Uh, 3 has a do not exceed V&E speed of 300 knots. The V&E in this plane is about 220 knots. So, go for a ride. So we're taxiing out to runway 23 for departure? Yes, we are. All right. Which is the uh, preferred calm wind runway here. Tell us a little bit about the float, the uh, flight profile, where we're going to go uh, today. Uh, kind of make it up as we go. Maybe we'll take off. And, uh, most of the, the training is done between the two ridges. They won't take off. You gotta stay away from Camp David, uh, P40 right. restricted area, right. and uh, the Class Bravo, the uh, 8 is SFRA, as they call it now. So we could fly uh, over toward Harpers Ferry, which is actually a neat place because those three rivers come together. We can fly over there. We'll, uh, we'll do some maneuvers in, in between the two ridge lines that do the practice area here. All right. Might land you a couple. This airplane doesn't have a steerable nose wheel, it's a free castering okay. wheel, so you have to steer only with brakes or rudder if you're going fast enough. So it's not like a Cessna where you can just put the rudder and turn. You gotta actually pump the brakes a little bit. There's 80 knots. Rotate. We have positive rate. Gear her up. Taking off into the sun here. About 90 knots here on my mount. Get our flaps up here at 100 knots. Right, we're doing 100 knots, 1,000 feet a minute. It's not quite as fast as a climber as the, the more horsepower ones. Or the ones with the three blade propellers climb a little better. Nice fall colors. Today. Oh, nice day. Love it. Lovely day. Right now, between these two ridge lines, which is where they do practicing around here. Okay. I'll take her up to about uh, 5,000 feet here. Airplane is very easy to fly. It's very light on the stick. Deep turns are a breeze. You don't really have to trim. So you do a lot of cross-country flights in this airplane. What kind of performance do you find that you get out of um, it as far as cruise speed and fuel flow? Typically about 170 knots and about 8 gallons an hour and about 8,000 feet. It's that's, not the fastest class air, but it's very efficient. That's pretty respectable, though. 8 it gallons is. an hour and 170 that's knots. Deep. Yeah. Like last air three would be cruising about 220, but they're also flowing about 16 to 17 an hour. So what kind of range do you get as far as time-wise? This airplane holds 53 gallons of fuel, so I have pretty good range. Uh, I can go 1,200 miles if I really want to sit here that long. Wow, yeah, that's that's quite some time. I can go from Maryland nonstop to Florida if I want. So it's got good range. It's got uh, 42 in the wings and 11 in the uh, header. Uh, being experimental, you can do something other low wing. Certified plane can do, which is connect the fuel tanks. 
The fuel tanks in this plane are connected by little tubes, which keeps you from having to constantly switch tanks. That's on surface airplanes, the FAA does not allow you to run fuel lines through the cabin. Right. So we have two little tiny lines underneath the seat that just uh, allows the fuel to cross flow. Just less thing, the one more thing to worry about when you're flying. And we have traffic here, showing we have somebody 200 feet above us. Kind of must be maneuvering over that way somewhere, on six miles. And that line is their direction vector? Yeah, the direction will? vector, yeah. And this means they're 100 feet Correct. above us. And if we get closer, I think within three miles, it will alert us with a little message. It, this is uh, not like a, uh, it's not like a uh, TCAS on an airliner. It's, it's a TIS, which comes from the uh, FAA radar uh, data feeds back into the transponder. And it's not quite as accurate as a TCAS, but it's a, a good, good thing to be, uh, just for awareness. Well, on the TCAS, we get the same diamond in the plus or minus referencing the altitude. We don't get a direction no. vector, though. I mean, you have to you have to watch it for about 10 seconds to see what the trend oh, is. Oh, see where the dot's going? Yeah. What is the uh, usual cruise climb speed? About 120. 120, yeah. And I'll give you about how many feet per minute to climb? Six. 600. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a rocket up. You see, kind of settle in about probably about 150 knots. You want to take the controls? Sure. All right. So Frederick's off to my left. Yep. Chip. Yeah, it's definitely light on the controls. Yeah. Very it's real touchy. Yeah. I don't even need much trim. No, nope. if power changes, it's all pretty, pretty easy to do. Try right, it like a standard 45 degree steep turn and see uh, how easy it is to hold altitude. Yeah, let's get it to 5,000. Got somebody maneuvering around there ahead of you. All right, I'll start over this way. Yeah, it's very light movement. It's almost like you fly with two fingertips. It really does. I'll go ahead and do one to the left. Pretty easy, huh? Wow, yeah, she really does fly light. I know, like in the testing, you do a 45 degree, you know, it's like a commercial, what is a commercial seat turn? 60? For yeah. Commercial? You gotta put a lot of trim in. I think just put it over and it goes. You find anything that that's, uh, that handles like this? No, I mean I've blown the Super Cub a bit, and uh, this is even lighter. Yeah, see, this has got a little more speed on Super Cub, so it kind of yeah. kind of responds better. Very, very. Like you said, it's definitely a two-finger airplane. Yeah. Uh, and we did a clearing turn. Let's do a steep turn here to the right. It's it's uh, it's a great airplane, but. It's not a good airplane for someone who uh, is inattentive. That's true. Uh, with the size of the wings, as small as they are, it stalls at a rather high speed. <laughs> um, what does a Cessna stall usually? Like 50, 45? Yeah, right 50. around there, 55. Yeah, when the, in a clean configuration, a single stall about 70. And I'm not even that much back pressure on this yeah. uh, steep turn. 45 degrees. Yeah, you're right on the third 45. Holding altitude pretty good. So, turn back out of the sun. Here we're doing about 160 knots. And you're 24, 24, 24 inches, 24, 24, you're yeah. about 170, 170 knots. Fuel flow is a seven and a half gallons an hour. Ground speed 154, very nice. Heading into the wind a little bit. Very efficient airplane. Very fun to fly. Handles real well. Yeah. I, do, I do like it. It's a lot of fun. Good to turn and fly up the river, I don't think.
It's a very light, very light airplane. Not quite like a pits or anything, but it's uh There's a nice UR Harpist ferry there. Yeah. Railroad tunnel. Yep, yeah, there it is. I've been I've been down there. Walked across that bridge, across the other side. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, there's a footbridge next to the railroad tracks and Well, how about we take her on in? Sounds good to me. Take it. You got your aircraft. I'm fine. That's downtown Frederick with all the brick buildings. Fire in yeah. the That's exactly what that is. Below 120, get the wheels down. You're down. Fuck. Notch in at 100. Let's start turn to final two. There's 90 knots. I got 80 on final. 90 on final. Cut down just below 80 about. Alright, uh, get it down here. It's more like a jet than a... Because <laughs> you kind of don't really flare it, you just kind of hold a nose high attitude. Still touches. Cause the, the tail is so close to the wings. If you try to flare it too much, it disrupts the airflow over the tail. Because they're not that far apart. Right. So, do that, you kind of lose uh, your elevator effectiveness. So you just kind of fly it nose high. Arrest the sink rate, just kind of hold it at it. 100, 200 feet a minute until it touches. 